A massacre takes place in this city every day. A bomb explodes. A dismembered hand is thrown into someone's garden as a forewarning. Nobody feels safe anymore. Whilst heroin dealers work openly on street corners and murderers shoot in broad daylight, policemen remain unwilling to apprehend them. At least four very different wars are being conducted between Sunnites and Shiites, between drug cartels, between political parties, as well as between ordinary criminals and the police. Tiziano Terzani wrote these words about Karachi in 1995. Little has since changed, except that this port city with its 18 million inhabitants is now Pakistan's biggest trade and population center. What is life like in Karachi for a small Christian community in St. Philip's Parish? According to a recent newspaper report, was more than two million illegal immigrants in Karachi. That's a very big number. It has an impact on the overall population. It has an impact on many other things, on the crime situation, on, on, on drugs, on smuggling. In this city, those who sell drugs, it is already understood that they are also from the tax mafia and also involved in political acts, and everyone is involved in it. Here in our own area, many religious groups have also adopted the same process. They have their own terrorist wings. According to secret assumptions, there are almost 56 terrorists in Karachi who are target killers. You just show them the picture, and in the evening, you receive the dead body. Daily, 10 to 15 dead bodies. And the biggest dilemma in Karachi is, when a person is killed or murdered, after 10 minutes, the police and the people move around as if nobody has been killed or nothing has happened there. No human person had died. At this moment, the police do not have any kind of role in the city. The wave of terrorism in Karachi has become worse in the last 10 years. Target killings are mainly the result of political parties, big business, drug gangs and fundamentalist religious groups settling scores. The reality on Karachi's streets also includes unpredictable bomb explosions that kill and maim many innocent people. The growing violence, though not directed against Christians, inevitably affects them. During five months of 2012, five boys were shot in Isanagri, one of Karachi's poor, mainly Christian neighborhoods. One of the victims was Faisal, a young man under 25 who ran a small mobile phone accessory shop near his home. He was sitting in his shop. Two thieves came in and they started looting the shop. They had a gun with them. I suddenly came there. They also pointed the gun at me. Then I jumped on one of them and held him. But he fired on my son. The one who had taken the money ran away. The one who opened fire on my son, we caught him. We immediately went to hospital, but they had shot my son dead. When I heard the firing, I ran down. Faisal was dead. He did not make any sound. I went and took him in my lap. He was a very loyal child. He was very intelligent and he was very capable. He made a very big sacrifice for both of us. He went to the seminary to become a priest, but he realized that neither his mother nor his father would run the household. So he came back from Lahore and took responsibility for everything. I have a small shop with recycled things. I just open it for two to four hours. Then I get tired because I'm a diabetic patient. And he came back because of my condition. 
He used to live with us. He was a big support for us. I cannot tell. I don't have the words. I can't live without my son. Sanagri, you mentioned, it's a very large, I think what you would call it a slum, or let us say a, a large number of poor people living in a certain part of the city. The city has grown. So there are land grabbers who are interested in this area. There are drug pushers who come around selling drugs. There's the problem of illegal sale of alcohol. There are money lenders who prey on the poor who need money. They lend them money at very high rates, which then becomes difficult for the poor man to pay back. Most of our Christians are mostly economically, socioeconomically, on the lower level of society. The streets are very small and narrow. People live in small houses. They cannot even breathe properly. They cannot have hygiene and good food. Most of the people are sick. Some have cardiac problems, others have tuberculosis, and many are suffering from other kinds of diseases. Usually, these people work as cleaners, sanitary workers. Some are government employees. Some are teachers. But all of these people are underpaid. Their salaries are very low. Because they live under stress and pressure, many poor people have now become addicts. Some use heroin, some drink alcohol, and some take opium. Some people turn to these local ways of addiction as a way of getting rid of their difficulties and worries. Issa Nagri's poor inhabitants decided to defend themselves against the drug mafia racketeering, extortion and growing violence. They chose to build a wall to limit traffic through the narrow streets and to control all who wish to enter this Christian enclave. <laughs> 